That is building resilience in our food system to achieve sustainable food systems. Thanks for joining us. Please note that this event is being recorded. By participating, you show your willingness to be recorded. We invite you to use the Q&A function to put the questions or comments forward and are also getting direct contact with you. So please use the Q&A button, not the chat button. You also have the option to use the raise hand button. You're, you're all muted and we will activate your microphone if you're putting in a question. We have measures in place to help maintain the integrity of this call. Should there be any disturbance, please bear with us and we'll restore order shortly. To kick off the webinar, we have Dr. Philip Ojo, the Director General for the National Agricultural Sea Council, NASC. He'll be giving the welcome address. Thanks again. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A panel session on COVID-19 impacts on Nigerian seed industry and building back better. Our moderator for this session is Mr. Folari Okalola, which I introduced earlier. He's um, the technical advisor to the DG at NASC. Mr. Okalola, you were made this morning. Yeah, thank you, Ewande. I'm uh, very much with you and nice. Mr. Okalola. Yes, Ewande, can you hear me? Okay, uh, good morning once again, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, first uh, session uh, talking about uh, COVID-19. Uh, we all know about COVID-19, and uh, we know that COVID-19 has affected a lot of uh, our day-to-day -day living today, and it's not strange that uh, it has uh, it has its own impact also on the seed industry. So that is why we are looking today at this topic, COVID-19's impact on the Nigerian seed industry and building back better because uh, the industry uh, to a large extent has been uh, affected. And to the session, we explore the various challenges the pandemic has unveiled in the seed sector and create possible solutions. So we encourage everybody to be uh, very, very active. Uh, our participants who are apart from the panelists, please be uh, very much active. You, we want you to send your questions and answers or solutions that you think could help in uh, uh, mitigating the impact of COVID-19. Uh, we want to harness the various strategies that we can pick from here to ensure that adequate supply of food post COVID-19 is uh, put in place for us in Nigeria. And of course, develop a roadmap for a residency sector uh, to withstand future cho shocks in the industry. COVID-19 came to us almost uh, like a sudden uh, in, um, uh, pandemic and it was very, very tough and hard on the system. We don't want the same to happen in future and that is why we are discussing this. So I have a few uh, people that will be, you know, talking to this topic. They are very, very important uh, stakeholders that have very vast experience in the industry. I have uh, first uh, Mr. Odumide Bikunde. Uh, Odumide Bikunde has been the commercial business lead of DuPont, now Cotiva Ag Science uh, from June 2010 till date. Is uh, a graduate of the uh, from the Obafemi Awolowo University, and he has a, a very, very much uh, working experience in various uh, industries, including uh, Guinness flour mills, uh, Premier Seed in the past, and um, Odumide is a, has excellent leadership and emotional intelligence and he loves breaking new and challenging business frontier. And today we would uh, be listening to him to help us you know, break uh, uh, new frontiers on how we can address uh, the issue of uh, COVID-19 and the Nigerian seed industry. Uh, also on the panel is uh, someone I call the coach, is uh, being our coach in various fields, uh, Walter De Boeuf, Walter is senior advisor seed system with the Wagnijin Center for Development Innovation with more than 30, 30 years experience in small older agricultural development. Uh, Walter is a plant breeder and he has a PhD in communication and innovation studies, both from the Wagnijin University and the 
Water, water is our lead, uh, part of uh, our lead in the collaborative seed project. It played very, very important role in uh, the development of the uh, seed roadmap. And uh, he was our coach in, you know, churning out our uh, COVID-19 uh, um, uh, bulletins uh, on this study we did during the COVID-19 to assess the impact of the COVID-19 on the Nigerian seed system. Uh, also on this panel is um, Professor A.O. Ogunbile, uh, a renowned professor of agri-economics, whose excellent deed had won various awards in agri sector in and outside the country. Uh, is uh, uh, currently the MD CEO of Premier Seed Nigeria uh, Limited. Professor Ogunbile is a strong supporter of uh, seed industry development activities in Nigeria, and we appreciate him for supporting uh, the organization of this uh, Seed Connect conference. Uh, uh, Professor Ogunbile is uh, with us today and uh, is currently uh, raising the trail as the Chief Executive Officer of Premier Seed. So we want to then first and our Premier Seed was able to uh, uh, cope with the COVID-19 and also then from their experiences in uh, moving the country forward. And finally, I have uh, a renowned professor again, Professor Latif uh, Oda Dimeji Sonny, uh, a professor of food science and technology and project manager basics too. Uh, he currently uh, uh, works with uh, as the project manager for basics two in ITA. Uh, Professor Sonny has a lot of experience. He was um, the before we get to that place. Okay. Hello. I, I think we should mute uh, someone who is. Uh, so Professor Sonny is a member of the, um, he won in 2008, the Consultative Group of International Agri Research Award Regional Technology Development in Sub-Saharan Africa. Is the World President International Society for Tropical Root Crops and Chairman Steering Committee of African Women in Agricultural Research and Development. So uh, I welcome uh, all these uh, strong panelists and um, while we um, pause a bit to take the speech of the uh, Honorable Minister, I would ask the panelists to be on standby so that uh, once we, okay. Okay, the speech of Boaz from Agra. So I think we can pause and listen to uh, our supporter Ten. Agra. To, for Boaz to make his speech. Then we will go continue with the uh, panel. So please, uh, Boaz, if you are there, you have the floor now. Hello. Mr. Boaz, welcome. Thank you. I hope you can hear me now. My name is Boaz. I work with Agra as the head of policy and advocacy. We support a number of countries on the continent to put in place the right systems, but also making sure that the policy and regulatory environment is strong enough to be able to drive the city sector. My few comments and introduction basically is, as, as an organization, Agra, uh, maybe let me just start by highlighting the importance of seed, just to join myself with those who have been talking about the seed sector. Every human being is as good as the quality of the seed that produced you. It's not even talking about seed of plants or not talking about seed of any genetic material, but even as human beings, you are as good as the seed that produced you. So paying more attention to the quality of seed is extremely very important, not only for human beings, but also for uh, the seeds and inputs that we deal with. So I really want to say thank you for for inviting Agra to be part of this. And my important is just to highlight what has been the more uh, preoccupation. We, as Agra supported Nigeria, and we've been working with both the government of Nigeria, especially the, the Ministry of Agriculture and Road Development, as well as the private sector, to make sure that there is a stronger seed system 
in the country. And, and I'm really happy to hear that the roadmap has been uh, approved and launched, and we are already beginning to see a new actors in the implementation of the roadmap. And thanks to the government of Netherlands and others that are putting resources for the effective implementation of this particular work. Uh, just to add, and, and making sure that we, we demonstrate the value add that we do, is that as Agra, we try to look at the entire seed system. And I know a lot of people have talked about the seed system functioning uh, from breeding and variety release to early generation seed production, certified seed production, creating the right awareness, marketing and distribution, as well as policy environment. So unless you look at the entire whole summoness of the seed system, the likelihood of focusing on one element of the system and forgetting the other is, can be high. You can actually do a very good, strong uh, breeding program in Nigeria. You can even have a very strong early generation seed program in Nigeria. But the moment some of the areas like, for example, certified seed production by the private sector is not working or creating the right awareness by farmers, the adoption of seeds will not be efficient. So the intention is to make sure that we have worked on the entire seed system. And most of you within the Nigeria uh, Seed Council, as well as, as the Minister of Agriculture, will know that we worked with TASAI to make sure that we map the entire seed system in Nigeria, and we've been doing it on the rest of the continent. Uh, and we use that to make sure that we guide uh, the government to take leadership and ownership in showing everybody where the investments need to be and where they should be focused. So we're really glad that uh, as part of our support, we are seeing a stronger uh, body of, of stakeholders in Nigeria talking about seed, and we really uh, appreciate how this has been emerging. As most of you will know that we work with the ministry and other stakeholders to support the design and putting in place the Nigeria Agricultural Seed Council law, the one that really gave impetus to the, the Nigeria Seed Council uh, uh, as an institutional body, which is now well and em embedded within uh, the legal framework. So part of our work is not only to support the government, but ensuring that there is a strong legal and regulatory foundation for systems to function. So putting in place laws, regulations, guidelines uh, is very, very fundamental. And we welcome the Nigeria Agriculture Seed Council to take lead in this and of course, working with the private sector and the civil society and, and, and also definitely with the ministry uh, as a strong regulator to make sure that the issues around seed systems in Nigeria, seed work in Nigeria is not lost, but also making sure that in the future we are able to be uh, to be proud of the implementation of the of the seed uh, of the seed policy. Lastly, I want to congratulate the government partners uh, that have been putting their resources, but also their technical capability to make sure that the seed system in Nigeria works, and, and especially those who are also behind this uh, convening uh, to ensure that uh, we are not lost, but making sure that uh, uh, we keep really working on this. Lastly, as Agra, we commit continue to support to Nigeria. We con commit continue to support the seed uh, work in Nigeria. And please count on us when designing and support and developing different programs uh, for the country. Thank you very much for thank you for listening to me. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Boys. Thank you for that address. Thank you. I appreciate it. Please, I want to say if you have any questions, please put it in the QA function, not the um, chat box. Put it in the QA function. I'll pass, I'll pass it back to the panel session with Mr. Falarin. Mr. Falarin, you can go ahead. And you can also start off by taking some of the Q&A questions. Yeah, Yewande, I, I am looking at uh, question and answers and uh, we would uh, want to take our time. Let's listen first to uh, Mr. Um, Odumide Bikunde to you know, build the trail and start uh, with his own uh, few comments, then we can check the questions and, uh, and answers. Uh, so Mr. Ibikunde, I hope uh, you are here. Before I continue, can you just say hello to the audience? Good day, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm here and I can hear you very well, Polari. Okay, thank you very much. Professor Ogugbide, if you are also live with us, can you please just say hello to uh, seed industry stakeholders that are listening to us today? 
I'm very glad to be here and have a good time. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, my able Prof, Professor Dativ Sonny, please say hello to everyone, sir. I want to say hello to everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's good to see you. Water is water with us. If water is not yet with us, I will and. Uh, Ask uh, Maya to please uh, help connect water so that he can join us. It's very important on this panel. Is water with us? Okay, let's uh, continue. Mr. Ibikule, uh, once again, good morning. Uh, we have seen with the uh, impact of COVID-19 that uh, a lot of gaps in the Nigeria sea sector has been exposed. Uh, what are these various gaps and how can we leverage on innovation to achieve a more sustainable and residency system, not only in Nigeria, but in the whole of uh, uh, the sub-region, since you are the lead for Cotiva in West Africa. So can you please speak to this and then I go to one of the next participants. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Polani, and thanks. Um to everyone on this uh, webinar. And I want to say congratulations again to the National Cultural Council uh, on this fourth virtual um, Safe Connect uh, episode. Uh, well, uh, first of all, let me just quickly just uh, spend some few seconds on Corteva Agri-Science and I'll go into your question. Uh, Corteva Agri-Science is coming out from a merger of uh, DuPont and Dow. Uh, and um, it's made up of uh, what you used to know as DuPont Pioneer, Panas, it's DuPont Crop Protection, Dow Agrosciences, and then our digital systems. So that is what we found, you'll find now on, I mean, under Cotiva Agrosciences. And actually, um, our vision and mission statement really agrees with the theme of this um, edition of the Seed Connect, which is you know, our belief is, in, uh, is to enrich. Uh, the lives of those who produce and those who consume, ensuring their progress, uh, progress for generations to come. This is all about what we're looking at on, on this um, uh, program to ensure that we don't have issues uh, or we are, know how to mitigate issues that come from COVID-19 or any other pandemic in the future. Um, just to go straight to your question, uh, it is COVID-19 we are talking about today, but I think we should look at it uh, in a way, the very holistic manner in such a way that anything that impacts health, that impacts food security, that impacts movement, that impacts security, any natural disaster is, is coming with the COVID-19 is what we see now, but I think we should look at it that way. And I think there are lots of gaps that happen. Uh, the first of all is even looking at it from the regulatory part. When COVID-19 came, that, I mean, I'm sure uh, City Council will agree with me that there were problems of field certification, there were problems of certification of seed that were produced, there were problems that came with even yield estimation and also supply and demand uh, forecasting. These this were some of the gaps that came from the regulatory side. People could not move to go to the fields to do all those kind of things. Also, in terms of seed production, I mean, um, training could not be passed on to the farmers who are producing the seeds. Um, we could not get the right area to plant because people could not go to their farms. Um, um, even in terms of seed collection into the factories, these were also gaps that affect the seed production itself. And in terms of market and market information, you know, even after farmers have bought the seeds, I mean, people could not go into their farms to do after sales service to, to a lot of these farmers. So trading could not happen. Um, I mean, and um, these were impacts and gaps that happened uh, coming from COVID-19 um, uh, issue. But again, when you look at there are several innovations that I think that are looking ahead and in the future that we can leverage on. But first of all, we have to look at three things. Number one is we need to change our mindset, the way we do things, the way we think about issues, and also have an holistic transformation in how we do business and also re-engineering. We need to look at these critical, three critical, critical factors in making sure that we can mitigate when we have natural disasters in the future. 
in terms of fake certification, we need to look at, okay, today certification is compulsory. We need to look at it. I know that there is a roadmap already, but can we look at truthful labeling where maybe, you know, if you can produce what you need to produce, but you make sure that the qualities of what you have is written on your bag as we are doing it. And, you know, if there is even impact on movement, but whatever you have produced can be on the bag and then it can be such, I mean, it can be checked. And if it's not the way you have written it, you can be uh, penalized in, in what, whatsoever way. The other thing also in terms of innovation and technology is if you have coordinates of those files, then you could do photo imagery, whereby even sitting in your office as city council officials with the coordinates supplied by the companies, you could even do a kind of certification of those farms. This is a technology that you need to look at so that even if there's an impact on movement, you can still certify those fields that are being planted by the, by the seed companies. Also, one critical part that we need to keep looking at is, I know there was a webinar that City Council did on demand forecasting. We need to look at a, a way of forecasting for three to five years. And this is going to come from adequate data to ensure that it is not just about 2020 we're talking about. We will have already, we will have taken care of 2020, even if a pandem pandemic comes, we'll be looking at issues that can happen two years from now, not what can hit us in the head at, as, as, I mean, it has happened in, uh, in, in, in 2020. Now we need to also look at our models of, models of seed, seed uh, production. I mean, do we want to have 5,000 uh, seed producers as a company, why not look at a different model where we're looking at maybe producing our seed in commercial farms. By the time you have about 10 farms, I mean, it, it, the issues of getting to them is, is reduced. That will not be a great impact of having to certify 5,000 farms or 10,000 farms. So we need to look at that, can, we can look at that kind of model as a seed company to see how we can do it. And also, um, market information and dissemination. There were lots of things that happened. And then, you know, we had a webinar where we said, okay, can we have a way of grouping, um, I mean, um, the, the, the input providers into a place and farmers can go in there and access them. This is one way we can do it instead of, I mean, to make sure that there is, a, there is an input market somewhere where everybody in the city is bring their inputs instead of the agro dealers to just come to that place a day of the week and then they can be accessed. This is one way we need to look at it. And um, uh, finally, I would want to stop a little bit here is when we're looking at our small, uh, small scale uh, uh, older farmers, we need to ensure that we know their knowledge, we know their level of education, and then we will be able to put the right information to them. I mean, a lot of people are coming up with a lot of information now Ask, I mean, and this will need to be put on telephone platforms. The, 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 the small scale farmers will have. Do they all have those kind of farm, farm uh, telephones that can use, the, or that can, you know, where we can put those platforms in? So we need to, once we have the information, some of them we can only access them through radio. Some of them we can access them with radio and television. Some of them we can access them through, uh, um, um, I mean, those kind of platforms. So we need to have good demographics of our, of our small scale farmers. So uh, these are some of the innovations that we need to put in place. But like I said, three key things is we need to have change, we need to have transformation, and, and we need to have a strong re-engineering of the whole process. I will pause a little bit here um, uh, to, to uh, allow my other uh, discussions to talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Odumide Bikunde. That is very, very great. Uh, apart from the three things you have uh, you mentioned, I've also had uh, some uh, technology uh, and innovative solutions you are bringing up, up photo imagery, forecasting for long period, uh, changing model for seed production, closer farm versus scattered farms, market information and dissemination. And uh, of course, uh, knowledge of the farmers that we are dealing with. These are very, very important things that we would uh, be looking at. Uh, before I go to the uh, next uh, speaker, 
uh, let me introduce again Dr. Walter DeBoeuf, uh, Senior Advisor, Seed Systems with Vagnigin Center for Development Innovation. Uh, Walter, I can say, is a very a, a team leader, a coach in the seed industry across uh, Africa and the world, and he plays in very, very diverse uh, uh, fields also, apart from the seed sector. So Dr. Walter, you are welcome, and it's glad to see you. Can you say hello to everybody before I come to you very soon? Okay, good, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to hear, be here. Thank you, Mr. Following. Okay, thank you. So before um, I, I give the floor to uh, Walter, uh, um, Tata Wiba Usmaila is uh, telling everyone that yes, he has a contribution to make and we appreciate that contribution and is bringing out the fact that we need to worry about the future. And that is why we are discussing today. Uh, we uh, understand your concern and we are also worried about the future. And Tata is saying beyond COVID-19, what about issues of deforestation, increase in human exposure to viruses and bacteria. And you know, the fact that a lot of countries run out of food stuff when the pandemic hit. And if the lockdown and border closures had not had continued unabated, a lot of things would happen. And that is also what um, someone else is saying that we need to produce food all year round. And people are asking, can we get cultivars of seeds that grow all year round? So I want our panelists to uh, look at providing answers to some of these questions. It would be nice if we can plant seed of maize and other crop all year round. So uh, let's uh, look at this as part of what we may be providing answers to. I will come to us uh, in due course. So uh, Dr. Walter, you have led a lot of effort across the growth on impact of COVID-19 uh, on the seed sector and many other fields. What few lessons do you think Nigeria should take serious to transform the seed sector into a better and stronger one? Doc. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Following. Um, <clears throat> uh, I work with the Wageningen Center for Development Innovation in the Netherlands, and we have uh, partnerships with, uh, um, uh, we are gonna start to have a strong partnership uh, 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 with NASC and others in Nigeria the coming uh, uh, years. But we have already existing partnerships with other uh, seed sectors, with many of the stakeholders in other places, uh, like in Ethiopia, Uganda, Myanmar. And um, uh, we are, we saw that over the, uh, uh, the period of time when uh, uh, the COVID came, everybody was like, including uh, our upcoming partners, say, oh, what do we need to do now? And that was in the, the, the start of the pandemic in, uh, let's say, uh, March, April, June. How is it going to affect our business? How is it going to affect everything? I think everybody understands the sense of uh, uh, what do we need to do now? How do we take care of our staff and our business? So uh, with our partners in the different places, uh, 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 in the different places, we started to do these assessments. Uh, many of you have seen. And what came, what I'm going to share with you is what happened in that time of urgency uh, in the different places and how we responded. So everybody was very worried from the start on on this issue of uh, mobility, how it affected their mobility, uh, their staff, how it affected the mobility to see to the farmers, whether the farmers could come to the markets, whether. Uh, 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 inspectors could come and visit their fields, uh, whether they could, uh, if you had a crop in the field, whether seed producers would get their input. So everything was all about mobility. And people really tried to deal with that, uh, evolve. And uh, in many places, what we saw is that it is critical sometimes, even with these kinds of mobility restrictions, that there are representatives for a seed sector in place who can and at the federal or local levels, who can go see police officers, can talk with governors, with decision makers, with uh, authorities taking charge of this health. It, uh, it can be another situation, well, now it was a health measure. Uh, so how is the sector organized? And do you have, as a sector, a spokesperson, both in the public sector that you have with the excellent work that I think NASCA has been doing in that field, but also that as companies, 
and other uh, sectors that you have a very clear and who can quickly respond. We saw that happening in other places. And we saw also that NASC was really taking up this forward in a strong position. So in that way, I want to congratulate, but it's not just NASC because NASC is not the only player. Uh, uh, I think to have a, 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 some degree of leadership, Sidan has that role also in the country, but that even at local level, because you need to solve that uh, 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 at the federal level, but also local. I'm sure many of you are saying, well, who can take that role? Um, um, so then another thing that we saw uh, in different countries is that every sector is where it stands. And we know every sector needs to improve itself. And also we hope from Wageningen with uh, Sahel Consulting, with the support of the uh, NASC and other players to improve the performance, how the sector is functioning in the country to collaborate with you the coming years. But what happened with COVID-19 that existing uh, 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 strengths and also existing weaknesses became stronger, became more visual. When I listened to Mr. Olomudi, directly becomes these issues come through. So where there are, for example, how decision-making is done in certain areas, for example, in variety release, on approving a seat, on quality, how quick and responsive a sector can be. And we saw that in other countries also, for example, uh, in variety release, because of COVID-19, because a committee can't meet and they can only allow to meet physically, they couldn't make decisions anymore. We know that that kind of process is not is constrained, both for the breeders involved, for the companies involved. We know that there are difficulties, but the crisis made very visible that it is not really agile, that it can respond to quiz, and also that it can be done in a more efficient way. Because in many countries, we saw that people, because of the urgency of the crisis, they start to tackle these issues, how to decide, how can we meet? Do we need to wait for this? Can we do it maybe virtually? So it pushed for this kind of decision-making to go quicker. And uh, not, uh, sometimes the quality issues came clear. So it put stress on the system, on, for example, a uh, decision on variety release or other uh, areas where this kind of committees need to come together. Is there a way we can make it more efficient, effective, and also resilient? Because sometimes we have to operate in a different way. Another thing is that... Um, and that I also know from conversations we had with partners in Nigeria, I says, how are we going to do inspection of the fields? And it was already mentioned. Uh, as sometimes a country has, and in Ethiopia, Uganda, Myanmar, these were also discussions that are going on. Our inspectors can't travel. Is there another way we can do that? We know sometimes we have a bottleneck in the number of inspectors that are available and the kind of quality assurance mechanisms that we have. But is there a way we can do it otherwise? The COVID-19 crisis helps us to say, okay, with the urgency, we start to think, is there another way we can do it? We do that now. So we, the, 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 it creates a challenge and we respond and uh, uh, try to be creative. And there's an urgent need because otherwise we'll lose access to seats. So it creates an opportunity to think, okay, are we organized well? And can we do it better? Don't do it only because of we need to respond to COVID crisis because of the mobility issues, but actually what can we make, learn from it? So as a sector, we have organized our quality assurance, our decision-making uh, better uh, uh, and say, okay, we respond to it now this way, but can actually on a structural level, we can improve it. And a third point is, and we saw that in different places also that for example, government comes in uh, uh, to really improve farmers access to seed and how are we organizing that? Uh, how do we avoid uh, people misusing that kind of interventions for their benefits and not benefiting farmers directly? Is there a way we can use technologies and innovations to do it better? So in a crisis like this, how do we as a sector, including NASC, the companies, research, uh, uh, how do we realize something new and we might have some quality assurance or tracing or other technologies available but we use the crisis now also to really bring a new technology in it because people also we are changing anyhow let's bring it in now so 
three points I want to say, share with you in some of the structural weaknesses become more apparent and they create opportunities for us to act. Uh, emergency pushes us. So that's a key measure. So how do we decide on issues in our sector? Are we making it not too cumbersome? Are there other ways to do it, to do it in a faster, efficient? It doesn't mean less quality, but in a faster, more efficient way, using virtual and other kinds of technologies helping that. How do we decentralize or uh, structure our services? For example, inspection, but there are other services uh, play here also. And finally, how do we use technologies and innovative ways? And how do we see the, the, the difficulties that we face now with COVID-19? How we can make it, use it as an opportunity to make this sector actually, even without the crisis, stronger. So these are the points I wanted to share. And that's not unique to Nigeria. I think that in many of the countries where sec uh, players in a sector, like we are here in Seed Connect together now, you seize those opportunities. Uh, in Netherlands, we have an expression uh, uh, by a very famous soccer player, Johan Cruyff, which many of you may know. He always said, every challenge creates an opportunity in soccer, but also in the seed sector. Here it's back again to you, uh, Florian. Thank you very much. The important uh, things, apart, uh, uh, particularly the fact that existing strength becomes stronger and existing weaknesses become weaker. And you've asked us a lot of questions. How? 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 And that is what we will take up from uh, Seed Connect to now look at those weaknesses and those trends and our reactions and documenting them so that in future, when we have a crisis, we have you know, documented ways and approaches of going through them using technology and a lot of things. I think this is one important thing that we should not lose. We recollect that uh, for us in uh, this part of the world, sometimes we had the Ebola pandemic and now you know the COVID uh, coming. So, uh, if we had clear documentations of how we attended to the Ebola, we could quickly deploy it, you know, to address the COVID. And that is what we should learn from uh, things like this. So, so thank you, Dr. Walter, for uh, this very, very uh, important, uh, you know, inputs and uh, um, strategies that you have brought on the table. Let me go to Professor Ogugbile, who is also a practicing, uh, you know, uh, seed uh, company CEO. And uh, Premier Seed uh, uh, was also involved in the pandemic one way or the other. So, Prof, uh, the pandemic led to a halt in business activities, which in indirectly affected production and distribution of seed to farmers. This led to slash in supply. And of course, I don't know, it will affect prices and other things. So which strategies were adopted to meet the demand of customers and what measures can be adopted to prevent shortages of supply in the future? Let's learn from the experience of Premier Seed in this regard. So over to you, Professor Gumbile. Thank you very much. Um, we are very happy to share our experience running the pandemic. Uh, the emergence of uh, COVID-19 made uh, our government, state and uh, federal, to take some measures which actually affected our uh, activities. And the most prominent one is the movement restriction, which probably we can call lockdown. And it affected the sea sector in this ways. We are problem in recovery of our raw seed from agroas. We are problem in processing and packaging because of limited number of workers we could use. We are restricted in packaging and deployment of our seed to the uh, the agros or uh, the ag the processors and distributors, and most especially to the farmers. So this made this to be very late to the farmers, and we 
MCCH reduction in the exits that we planted and probably reduction in output we produce. With this, we took measures to make sure that we delivered to our farmers and customers. First of all, the lockdown movement was restricted. We had to seek for permission, exemption to be able to move our product from one point to another. It's not easy, especially most of the exemptions and permits that were out did not spell out the role of seed. And this put us in a lot of problems. Permit, permission had been given to other fertilizer and chemical uh, companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, but we had to cry out that seed is very important. And one thing to note is to let the authorities know the importance of seed. When we are talking of products that is needed and is what is needed for food security. When we got the permit, we had problem at borders from one border of one state to another, but we were able to make distributions. What actually helped us again is our network of distributors all over the country. We have offices where we have our marketing officers who liaise with the agro dealers and these agro dealers liaise with the farmers and their facilities to communicate directly with them. Their personal vehicles were made to go around to go to places and deliver. So this one helped us a little. First, With experiences from so what know. we have been doing before, with the use of rural uh, seed uh, promoters. This is a situation where we employ the services of young men and ladies in the rural areas, and we link them to our major distributors so that they will pick seeds from them. They became mini entrepreneurs. And the rural people did not have to come to the cities to pick their seeds. This helped a lot and is something that can be promoted. We used the privilege of some what we call organized markets, in which we liaise with processors, what we have been doing before, who use aggregators, and the aggregators know the farmers. With this method, we are able to deploy large quantities of seed to our farmers. That is, farmers who produce special varieties of seed and Processors who use special varieties of seed we are able to deploy through the use of this chain network, that is our uh, farmer, our uh, aggregators, and the processors. We deployed a large number of seeds through this. We distributed seeds through uh, governments, state governments, who require seed for palliatives to their farmers. Large bulk of seeds were shipped to states which would like to give seed as palliative to their indigent farmers. And this helped the farmers to be able to acquire their seeds. Also, we use radios and jingles to be able to describe, locate, announce the various redemption centers where they could get our seeds and where they could get seeds of different uh, characteristics. 
these are the measures which we used for sure is not up to the capacity we'll have done under normal condition, but we make sure something reasonable in the terms of deployment of seed has been done during this period. Well, which measures out of this one, what lessons have we learned that we can expand when there's no more uh, COVID under normal condition? Well, marketing has been a problem before. The aspect of using the and CPs, that is rural sales promoters and uh, community-based uh, advisors is very, very, very good and something that we can explore. One, the advantage of this is that you provide employment for youth, male and female, and you can empower them to become mini agro-dealers right on the farm. And this one will provide employment and is a means of market development. One of the strategies that we would like to be looked at and see whether we can explore in terms of spreading our tentacles in terms of sale is that of chain value where you use processors, aggregators, and farmers. Under this method, farmers are guaranteed market, and which is the most important thing. So when they know the market, they have market, they'll be glad to produce, and the seed companies too will be assured of market for the sale of their seeds. These are areas which we can explore and see how we can perfect when there's no COVID-19. And uh, the third one is the anchor coral had some promise, but there are still some elements, some problem about it that can be perfected. This tool will make sure that farmers get uh, their seeds. Having said all this, we know we have not done enough their seed gaps that we need to uh, fill if you want to do this improperly. Mr. Olumide has um, given a lot of gaps. And we would like to add more to what we are envisaging. Even if you want to produce the seed, the death of uh, any generation seed, we know it. And it's always a problem. The assignment squarely on the shoulder of uh, the research institute in the provision of Bida seed and we are winding up the scope for the production of uh, foundation seed. The gap of low adoption of improved seeds and other improved seeds. We know under this condition, something must be done and extension is a big problem. We need to have very strong extension so that people will know the use of improved inputs. If you hear the kind of questions farmers ask you, you see companies, we are taking a seed, so you have sold this seed to us, you must tell us how to manage it, how to produce. I think there should be a very strong effort to improve our extension uh, facilities. And like I said earlier on, if we can explore the area of using 
the armed SPs and CBAs, those people live around the farmers and they can be given proper training, just like we are training them. They are not only selling seed, they are also given extension services to uh, the farmers. Where fake seed faking and all the other seeds is a gap that we have not been able to solve. And it's worse during the time that we are not able to reach most of the farmers that need improved seed. So in terms of uh, fake uh, seeds, I think the error, the, that, uh, that problem is being solved by the use of um, um, seed codex that has been introduced. We are watching and see how this thing is going to work, and we, we are, shall all cooperate to make sure that uh, this thing will work. Well, the there's possibility of data. Somebody has mentioned this in terms of supply and demand for seed. We will be producing seeds, uh, producing on speculative basis. You don't know what you are going into. You don't know what quant quantity you are supposed to produce and uh, who and who need the seed. I think effort should be on to be able to acquire good data on supply and demand and areas where some seed will be uh, needed. I would like to mention. Yeah, uh, Prof. Sorry, sorry, sir. Maybe uh, I would come back to give uh, another room to Prof so that uh, you don't uh, fire all the cylinders now, sir. I know you are already answering some questions I still want to ask you. Okay, I never knew you are coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back to you, sir. I'm coming back to you, sir. So uh, thank you very much, sir. We will be able to uh, tell you what we have done and in which areas we can still explore and make sure that uh, we expand upon when there's no COVID. 19. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And I think uh, we need to document uh, a lot of successes and experience that uh, Premier has uh, brought on the table so that other people can, can learn. So now I want to go to uh, Professor uh, Latif uh, Sonny. Um, Prof, with the increasing population and demand for food within the country, there's urgency in ensuring that small older farmers, which is what has also been mentioned, uh, get access to improved seed varieties. Some questions are coming already that I know your uh, presentation will address. So what strategy can be meted out to achieve this? And does Nigeria have the capacity to implement these strategies presently? So Prof, you have the floor, sir. Uh, do you see my slides? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, I want, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, all of us. Uh, NASC is part of Basic 2, and uh, Lavakuma is one of our team senior leaders in Basic 2, who is also part of this audience. Uh, the, the, the strategies is number one, uh, we need to build an economically sustainable integrated seed systems. It could be cassava, it could be yam, it could be maize. It must be sustainable, it must be profitable, and it must have a life of private sector in it. The second strategy is we need to all work together to facilitate demand-driven breeding systems. The area where breeders just uh, breed maize or cassava just for the fun of it is gone. Recently now, there is a global effort in excellence in breeding, and which I think the national system needs to also work together. I've not seen universities in Nigeria 
coming together and uh, integrating our uh, making sure that we enhance our breeding systems in this country. The third point is on the promotion of our functionality of what we call early generation and commercial seed enterprises. Early generation and commercial seed enterprises. And the fourth one is we need to decentralize the seed quality assurance system. And the National Seed Council is already make it a priority on the top party certification process. It is very important because not all the farmers are educated, not all, the, not all farmers or stakeholders will have access to the internet, and that's why we need to make sure we decentralize to our localities. Very, very important. And the next one is formation and strengthening of the seed producer associations. The reason that if how many times are we going to be having projects and projects to be helping farmers or seed producers? But if they have associations and they build themselves over the years, they are the ones that will be convening this kind of national dialogue that we are having today. Finally, our strategy is enabled environment. I know that uh, Agra, NASC, Waganike, every one of us, we are working to, towards making sure that the policymakers actually give an enabled environment for the seed sector to grow. And that is why we say no more free distribution of seeds. Uh, under our COBWA program of CBN, CBN has announced that all farmers must buy seed. Uh, we are by 24th of uh, this month, we are convening a national meeting with all the commissioners for agriculture in IITA with the view of making sure that they also buy into the issue of no free distribution of seed. It is very important. Now, do we have capacity as a nation? I will say yes. Nigeria is the leading uh, sector in agriculture in Africa. And uh, most of the countries are looking towards Nigeria. We have interest from some policy makers. Some is that today it may not be driven by the president, but we have the CBN governor who is driven some of these things. We have the honorable minister for agriculture and rural development who is so passionate. And we have uh, Mrs. Babangida in the FDA who is so passionate and they are ready to actually make sure that we, we mainstream uh, free uh, the issue of uh, commercial seed activities in Nigeria. We have responding National Seed Council of Nigeria, responding with all capital. All, the, all of us, either ITA, Waganide, Seed, every one of us working with us in the last five to six years, and you will have seen that uh, NASC is now digitalized. And with the way NASC is going, definitely it's going to take up the regional leadership. It's the same way with the National Root Corp Research Institute, National Series Research Institute, but NRCRI that we know is also on the same table with NASC. There is national policy and initiatives so which we definitely enhance our capacity more and we have developmental partners. Uh, my National Root Corp Research Institute that I've had my PhD since 1995, Lisa Biomi is also part of this. And the development partners are passionate to actually introduce innovations that will give solutions to farmers' problems. And we have farmers and we have donors. What has been the contribution of IIT? I'm the project manager of this project. Uh, it's sponsored by Bill and Many Dagate Foundation, well over $14 million. And we are working in Nigeria and Tanzania. We are working with uh, MIDA in Tanzania. We are working with uh, CRS, SAE in Nigeria, National Root Corp, National Seed Council, NRCRI, and also Tanzania Research Institute and uh, TOSI. And of course, we linked up with the CGR uh, Next Gen Project and Cornell University. 
in terms of breeding. So what has been the strategy for this uh, uh, basis? Number one is promoting excellence in breeding programs, making sure that all breeders work together, no more silos. Number two is how do we make sure that we establish what we call foundation seed complex, early generation seed complex, that we take the plantlets from the breeders and begin to expand it. In Nigeria today, we have, we have the IIT gold seed, which is uh, based in IIT but limited liability complaint. And we also have Umudike seed in, uh, on Umudike Abia State. Uh, it's also a limited liability company. In Tanzania, we have one from the national public sector, Tari, and we have a private sector, Kim Organo, because I see some of us asking questions. Can we set up as private breeder? I will say yes, but it is better you start as foundation seed company. And our project in IJ is ready to work with you and with NASC to make sure that you do it right. We have one or two mother companies that are coming on board. For larger percentage community, either at the uh, area where they are producing traditional products like gari, fufu, chips, we promote what we call commercial, community-based seed enterprises. We also have it as a model where we link up the processors, large-scale industries that will also stimulate seed production for their clusters of farm, 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 farmers. And the last one is the root producers, where you now, they, they, they now get quality seeds and move on. So we, we, it's, a, it's a model that will have actually be able to help all of us. For high IT gold seed, or as I'm talking to you, we are active in 11 states in Nigeria as of today. Our role during the pandemic, high ITA was on the road because we have opportunity of getting letters and uh, from Federal Ministry of Agriculture and uh, all other players that are interested in making sure that we give seeds to farmers to be able to farm during the COVID period. Thank you very much for my discussion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dativ uh, uh, Sonny. That is a very important one. I know I still have some time and I will come back to you again if uh, possible. Uh, and a very important presentation on, you know, the roles that BASIC and ITA and other stakeholders have played during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, still playing, even as, uh, you know, uh, we continue to uh, survive in the midst of the pandemic. So thank you again. And uh, we've noted a lot of uh, key important uh, things. Uh, a lot of questions are coming. People are asking what did the council do or what can the council do? Let me also say that uh, the council as alluded to by Walter played a lot of leading role during the, you know, the uh, studies of the pandemic. A lot of uh, people started asking for many things that were not even part of the statutory responsibilities of the council, but we responded to it and made sure that we uh, linked up with every relevant stakeholder to ensure that the ease to move movement of a seed uh, during the pandemic was, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the um, barrier to movement was uh, lifted. Uh, we got permits from the Inspector General of Police to permit uh, certification officers, seed inspectors, companies to move their goods across the country. And we started the campaign that uh, seed is an essential commodity. Just like during the pandemic, they had health workers, you know, security workers, all these uh, key workers as essential staff, we were able to make government realize that all seed producers are essential staff because uh, if we don't produce seed, then after the, even during and after the pandemic, we may not have uh, food to eat. So we also initiated the setting up of, you know, small uh, tax forces in uh, every state 
to you know drive and to be the first point of call at any time when people are having challenges of movement to their farm or to their uh, to their companies or to move seeds uh, about. And these are some of the uh, few things. Apart from writing to you know state governments of the fact to immediately even get seeds to farmers and encourage them to go to their farm. Because if we did not farm then maybe some of the harvest we are having today will not have it. And above all, we did a lot of awareness to let everybody, every Nigerian know that you can get quality seed and in that small uh, 10 square meter, five square meter, or that small area behind your backyard, you can also be a producer of small quantity of you know, food that we eventually feed the nation. And we're happy to say that a lot of people had you know, gone into production during that time and it's a pain off now. So for us in the council, we'll continue to play that real, lead role. We'll continue to do what uh, ever we feel that we need to do. And as much as our people see any need or what is necessary to be done, we are just a phone call away from you. Call us and tell us and see us act in ensuring that the sea system is uh, uh, visible and uh, sustainable. So let me go back to Mr. Ibikunde now. Uh, we are trying to make sure that we answer all the questions, but make sure you keep your question coming. Even if you don't get responses now, put your emails and we would reach you even after the, the program. Mr. Ibikunde, a crucial aspect of ensuring residents in food system is data availability. It was said uh, by Prof, it was said by Professor uh, Professor Sonny, uh, uh, data av availability and knowledge for right decision making. If you don't have data and you don't have the know-how, there will be problem in making the right decision. So how can we empower smallholder farmers to assess the right information they need about seeds to meet local and international food demand? Can you take some uh, five more minutes to, to talk about this? You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much uh, again uh, for Larry. And um, you know, um, it is very important that um, when we're looking at this kind of issue, uh, data is critical because you use the data for your planning, and then you also use it. But even before we look at how we can roll it out to, we roll out our decisions to the um, smallholder farmers, we need, to, we need to look at how do we, do, do we have the capacity for, for data, or do we have the data, and how do we ensure that the data we collect are very credible? First of all, just like Professor Sonny said, I mean, mentioned, we have the capacity as a country, and also we even have the data. But the point is, have we harnessed the data together? Uh, yes and no. Um, the, the data are just in pockets and silos all over the place. So we need to find out a way uh, to, to, to pull this data together. First of all is, uh, when you look at our smallholder farmers, they are in the hinterland, uh, there are some places where uh, you can reach, like maybe May to July, and when the rain is at its peak, you cannot even reach them again. You know, they are just on their own. So first of all, we need to look at the population of these as smallholder farmers, and we need to look at their demographics and kind of categorize them. Because if we don't do this, we will just be rolling out, you know, information and the information will only be useful to some set of these farmers and not to all of them. So if we do the population and demography of these farmers, you know, there, there are the smallholder farmers, there are some of them that have, like I mentioned in my you know, first um, uh, response, um, there are some of them that have maybe Android phones that you can just, you know, network easily. There are some of them that have only uh, call and respond, I mean, and uh, receive telephones. There are some of them that cannot even access this thing, even when they have it, they don't know it, they don't know how to use them. So we need to do good uh, demography of these farmers, uh, their age groups, you know, their locations and all this, you know, put all this together. So that was the first thing we need to do. And I need to mention here, that was a time that the seed council did something very close to this before, just prior to GES. Seed Council had, I mean, came out with 
where the small scale older farmers are located in terms of numbers. And this was used by a lot of seed companies in terms of marketing. You could decide and say, this is my niche area. This is where I'm going to work. So I think we need to come, we'll first of all, come back to that, pull out that kind of information, categorize the farmers, and then it is easy to decide and say, okay, this is the kind of um, information, or this is the kind of way I'm going to reach these farmers. The other point is this, we have all these uh, roadmaps coming up, all these initiatives coming up. We need to be very careful to ensure that these initiatives can always go beyond every government. You know, we've seen instances where, you know, once a new government comes in, that roadmap or something stays on the shelf. So we need very consistent policies, plans and strategies that will continue to operate irrespective of any politics or political party in place. So you have a roadmap today, but we need to ensure that it is going to be sustainable. Somebody has mentioned sustainability. Professor Sonny mentioned it. We need to make sure that we put things in those documents that will ensure that they will run themselves, you know, rather than somebody, you know, it just becomes a structure. So we need to look at that. Then, you know, even when we are looking at how farmers can respond to national and international food security issues, then good food demand forecasting comes into place. And look, link to that is about weather forecasting. You know, how do we ensure we have climate weather change now? Some people will say it's not happening. We've had floods over, you know, even in this country and like in the southwest of the country, like June, uh, July and August, there was no drop of rain. So we need to make sure that when, how do we make sure that we have a good weather forecasting system and we can disseminate this information to the farmers so that they know how to respond on time. Now, uh, the other factor here now is how do we now ensure that these farmers can have this information? Once we have categorized them, then we need the private sector players. We need private sector players who can come with probably, uh, I mean, insurance, information and everything and put them as a bundle, you know, work with seed companies, you know, maybe you are selling cassava, cassava stems, you are selling maize seeds, you know, put this as a bundle. So we need, I mean, Sahel, you know, the likes of Sahel, you know, all sorts of other companies that are around um, that are doing all, you know, um, uh, agora schemes all, all over the place. You, you cannot work in silos. If I am delivering fertilizers, you need to come to me or work together to say, okay, yes, I have these weather information systems. I, 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 I want to work with you. And then it comes as a bundle to the farmer. And then how do we ensure that that farmer in the interland receives it? From the categorization that we have done, we will now know that this farmer is only somebody who can receive radio jingle or who can receive a radio program or who can receive a television program or who can, who can use his, his, his phone to give him information on a daily basis, on a weekly basis or, or a monthly basis. So it, it, we cannot do this thing separately. They need to come because that information you want to give to him in terms of weather is related to the grain production is going to do. So you cannot go off that man that is selling mercy or cowpacy. So you need to work together so that the farmer can really understand. The other aspect of it coming from COVID-19 is, you know, if we're going to reach these farmers with information to make sure they can respond, we need to also build, you know, real time uh, uh, information. For instance, you know, somebody mentioned, you know, I mean, extension. Yeah, fine, extension is important, but then, what COVID has taught us is that we cannot do business as usual. We need, there will be a reduction of contact, you know, between the, 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 the farmers and people who are going to be the trainers. So how do we ensure that the training can continue, whether they have contact or not? So we need to look at real time. For instance, if we want to do a, a television program, you can set up your field just the same time the farmer is setting up his own field. So every week, you want to do, I mean, if any week you want to do fertilizer application, it is announced that this is a week of fertilizer application and you can show it on the television, you can make it happen on the, on the radio. Then the next day, the farmer goes to his farm. So, I mean, you as a extension person, you are showing it to him, 
but you are not just beside him because COVID, you know, was also a contagious disease. So as much as possible, we need to change our mindset, you know, of really reducing that contact, but at the same time, ensuring that what we want to do or what we, we can do it in a fast and sustainable manner. So you, and if you don't categorize this from us, you don't know the way, you wouldn't really get the right way of passing the information to them. And a very good part of this thing is also, we need to look at our irrigation systems. I mean, we, it, it's very, very negligible in this country. Um, you know, we, we need to look at how we can really, um, you know, um, I mean, build the capacities of people who are near the water basins and um, I mean, some farms who, who, who have the, 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 the land and everything, we need to see how we can, you know, so at the end, at the end of the day, they can even pull the smallholder farmers in their community into those farms and they can produce in season and out, 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 of, out of season. Um, um, uh, another thing I need to mention here also is, um, I'll, be, I'll, I'll repeat it, I've mentioned it, is the issue of insurance. This needs to, to be taken seriously. Uh, I know that farm is already doing it with, uh, with fertilizer. We need to bring it into the state systems, you know, to ensure that whether there is any, you know, whether issue or not, you know, we have a way of making sure that we mitigate the loss that will come to the farmers to encourage them that they can go back to the farms, I mean, the following year. So uh, uh, let me pause there also, uh, I mean, at this point, I think um, um, I, I've answered that question on how we can reach the smallholder farmers. Thank you very much. I was going to pause you, sir, if you did not pause, but uh, appreciation for all the I'm, very- looking, I'm looking at the time here, and you didn't tell us initially, so I stopped to five minutes in the first time, and this was that yeah. time as well. Yeah, thank you again. And uh, a lot of uh, valuable uh, suggestions uh, that can be, you know, turned into activities. And I would say uh, it shouldn't stop here. Cotiva with the council, with very, very other interested uh, partners should, you know, sit post this uh, seat connect and make sure that some of these things we are talking about, we put actions to it and deliver them for the good of the seed industry. Uh, that is what I would expect that uh, we do with uh, Cotiva and the likes of the others. So um, we'll soon be taking some questions and answers and we'll listen to uh, some few uh, comments from uh, some other uh, partners, particularly I can see Ernest Obi of the ECOWAS Commission and uh, would hear him, uh, at least let him speak to us from the ECOWAS uh, panel. But I see uh, most of our people are commenting and appreciating the discussion, uh, but I can assure you it will not end there. We would take it further than just uh, this discussion. Uh, Walter, I would come to you again. I hope Walter is still uh, here. Uh, strategic collaboration and partnership is key to creating solutions to challenges in the food system. What are the focus areas of the new collaborative seed project uh, and which adaptive strategies have been meted out in the project to ensure that seed industry is improved upon based on the uh, country's contextual situation. Walter, can you just uh, respond to this? Yes, of course I can. So uh, <clears throat> recently, uh, uh, the Netherlands and Nigeria at a more governmental level have agreed to work together on the seed sector development. And part of the process is that uh, we from Wageningen together with Sahel Consulting and uh, NASC and even people also from East West, we have been working with many of the stakeholders in developing a national seed roadmap, which was published last year uh, by NASC and shared with you. And in that process of developing that roadmap, uh, we work together to really say what is necessary now to really strengthen the functioning of the seed sector, independent of what crop, eh? so we, it was for all crops. Uh, and out of that entire process, actually, we got 22 areas that need to be addressed uh, from counterfeiting, 
issue of uh, information management, coordination, uh, early generation seeds. So I'm sure if you go to the website of NASQ, you can find a document where also some background for those 22 areas were indicated. Once we concluded that, we identified eight areas where we from the Netherlands, together with uh, can have something to offer for Nigeria to move forward and also uh, our Nigerian counterparts indicated. This is really what we want to work with you guys on because you have done it in other countries. Um, uh, we want to develop, use our uh, partnership uh, as a, as a Nigeria-Netherlands partnership, we bring something. So one of the topics that is among those eight is to support uh, uh, the process in capacity development, in bringing plant variety protection to the country. That's a decision by you, but we have been with our industry, uh, with our regulatory bodies, uh, uh, we can support you, for you to organize yourself, get ready and get it going. And, but that means also uh, how to go from paper uh, to plant variety protection to go further. Another area in that space is all indicated by many seed companies, uh, both domestic and uh, uh, nationally uh, uh, and internationally is to say, okay, how are we dealing with variety release in Nigeria? Is there a way we can improve the efficiency, accountability and transparency of the process in variety release? Then there are uh, uh, some other areas that deal more with the whole coordination. So what comes out of this whole area of this collaboration with NASC, with SEDAN and others uh, uh, to say, okay, how do we coordinate and how is this sector as a total uh, governed? So if we have a seed roadmap, how do we do that? And how do we work together uh, here? So uh, this is something we are gonna collaborate with the different stakeholders. But of course, uh, NASC, SEDAN, uh, but also the ministry uh, together. Uh, then there are more technical issues. Uh, where we, uh, for example, how can we, and that's also uh, some of the points that were earlier uh, shared already, how can we strengthen the process of decentralizing, uh, decentralizing uh, uh, quality assurance? So it becomes more efficient, becomes more effective, uh, uh, matching to demands of seed producers, uh, uh, adapted to different types of crops. Another area is where we, it was indicated that um, both with international companies present in Nigeria, but also with Nigerian companies to see, okay, how can we strengthen their capabilities uh, how, for them to engage in variety promotion, for example, in horticulture, but also for other crops, uh, not doing the business as we usually do, but what are ways that we can be more efficient in that? And then um, uh, another area there is to say, okay, extension, which was mentioned by one of the previous, is very important. So together with some uh, knowledge partners like University of Amadou Bello and others, we're gonna explore in the work in extension, how can extension, whether it is public, but also it can be private, can do a better job in promoting quality seed, promoting improved, more productive varieties, and improve, for example, the cultivating uh, uh, the, the cultivation practices required to create the variety. Because as we, all of you know, just seed and varieties is not enough. So to really, what are the ways extension is done? It's not to do all the extension, but how is extension on seed varieties and cultivation practices done in Nigeria? And how can we do a better job there? Um, so, the, so these are some of the uh, examples. So for, for plant variety protection, release, uh, governance, decentralized quality assurance, extension on seeds, uh, uh, um, uh, promoting of varieties. By, and then we also add some activities, for example, to relate to that institutional markets in Nigeria are big and with the crisis, they become bigger again. So much of the quality seed in the market in Nigeria is not is going through subsidy schemes or projects and big clients of seed companies in your country are those what we call institutional markets. So an effort that we want to do in the project together is to say what kind of protocols can we develop 
to make such processes good for the industry so they keep the businesses targeted at a market at a, at a normal market not to institutional markets but also that there's more clarity for projects and government and ngos intervening in the sector there's clarity what are the rules of the game uh, and that you create a, create a better level uh, playing field between the industry because our what we know in other countries is that if we institutional markets uh, are big in countries and in your country they are it is big it distorts the market and the development of an industry how to do that that's something we need to sort out together so that's a difficult one but i think it's a good moment in the forum also to put it on the and it's, we have to sort it out together uh, with all the players in that so that's one and that comes also very much in link with the final area where we're going to work is to create more coordination among donors uh, and our link with uh, uh, the embassy is going to play a key role in it with the Netherlands embassy who's also sport sponsoring. And I think the two final topics go very much together. So the sector needs to be ready to deal with it, but also donors and once intervening, those intervening in the seed sector also have to agree and do it in a way that in the end, the seed industry becomes stronger and becomes stronger independent from institutional players. Uh, and in that way, it becomes more uh, better serving the farmers of the country. Back to you, Mo. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So now uh, we are approaching to round up this session. 20 more minutes. I would be using about uh, eight out of those 20 minutes to listen to uh, some final words from the other two panelists. Then we take questions and answers, and uh, we would allow the other sessions to, to take the floor. Let me appreciate all those that are joining us from across Africa, uh, the ECOWAS Commission, the CORAF, uh, the African Sea Trade Association, those joining from Benin, Republic, Cameroon, a host of other country, uh, countries, we welcome you to Seed Connect Africa. This is not about Nigeria, it's about the continent, and I'm sure that you guys can then, and uh, you know, we are sharing knowledge and there will be one thing or the other that can be used in, in your various countries. So welcome aboard uh, the Seed Connect. So uh, Professor Ogunbide, uh, can I just allow you to, say the few remaining things you wanted to say in two minutes, sir. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, the gaps have been identified. Uh, I still want to talk a little more on the availability of data and the essence to have data. Uh, I still want to uh, agree with uh, uh, Mr. Bikule that by the time of GS, uh, now used to be a place where you can find custody of this data. In order to revive it, I don't think it's going to be very difficult to pick up from where we left. Um, in terms of uh, gap that can have in the, uh, the research institutes are supposed to be in charge of uh, provision of early generation. They are poorly funded. And even when they are funded, the uh, allocations will not even come on time. If you want improved seed from them and other technology, they should be uh, adequately funded. Meanwhile, some uh, private uh, companies are given permission to uh, produce uh, certified seeds. I think they too should you need uh, a lot of help, uh, both from the National uh, Agency Council and that of uh, the government. Lastly, the uh, capacity and infrastructure of most of the seed companies that we are having, the capacity so poor, so most of them don't have uh, good processing equipment. I think the idea of uh, uh, private uh, public partnership that was done one time uh, but still enjoy this, and uh, I think other, uh, this thing should be extended uh, so that we have uh, many seed companies who uh, have the uh, facilities to produce very clean and uh, improve uh, seeds. And lastly, we have been talking of uh, the harmonization of uh, 
ECOA laws so that no seed produced in Nigeria can move to Ghana without any hindrance. It's only on paper. This thing has not been implemented. You know a lot of problems before you can reach one uh, border to another to be able to do this. One. I think the government should look into this and let us have a clear vision of what to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, issues had uh, come out again about data and uh, expectations from the council, expectations from government, uh, expectation from uh, even the ECOWAS commission. So all these are things that we will take note. And like I said earlier, it's all about uh, collective uh, responsibility, everybody working with the council to get this done. The council uh, will not do everything, but we would identify those who need to do what and we would push that uh, everybody does uh, the needful. Thank you very much again, sir. Uh, I would uh, read some questions and uh, uh, some I've talked about, some are just a comment and I won't uh, look at them. Uh, the issue of a third party seed certification for cassava seed that we should explain more uh, from uh, uh, MD uh, Salamu seed we would get back to you on this because this may not be uh, the time to talk about this. Okay, Professor Sonny, you have the floor, sir. Yeah, what's the question? Uh, well, this question is about uh, talking more about third party certification, particularly as regards cassava. But I feel it's not uh, the right place to take this. Uh, but if you want to talk about it, I only want you to say some uh, final uh, words if you still add some things that you did not say in the first. Uh, right. Well, I've looked at the questions and somebody was asking that uh, if we say, uh, uh, there is no more free distribution of seed. We yeah. need not affect the smallholder farmers. And I said, no. The concept of uh, free distribution of seed is, uh, is that we are promoting farmers to be into business. Like uh, look for CBN uh, law on the Akoboa Boga now. In the expression of production, the cost of seed is already in the calculation. That's what we are doing. So if a government want to give seed, we will say government buy seed from this farmer. So they, they must buy the seed. And the, the most important thing is that we want to promote farmers to be, uh, how will you take it that you go to a village now and you see quality maize, sorghum, cassava, yam, and individual farmers are the ones selling them. That is the essence of uh, no free seed. Two, on the third party certification process. Third party certification process is like uh, this program that Babangida developed that time. This uh, rural, this thing, uh, NADA. If you remember that uh, rural community based activity, such that any farm that you have, Within that local government, there will be one or two, three certifiers. And we are suggesting that agro dealers should also be trained as third party certifiers because agro dealers are closer to the farmers and they don't need uh, transfer costs. So there's no additional transfer cost in this service and something like that. And if NASC do it perfectly, and the agro dealer certify a farm in uh, Olodo, for instance. He can scan the certificate to NASC database, online, digital. Those group of people can do it, but not the farmers. That is the proposal we are saying. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, this is uh, something that is uh, very important and we are going to uh, take into consideration in the council. And uh, let me also say that the council is uh, also looking at the fact that even uh, all those agro dealers that are marketing seeds in Nigeria need to be documented and they need to be known. So we are going to be, uh, I think we said, um, is it... Um, 
certifying them in such a way, just like you go to any pharmacist, if you are not a certified person, you can't sell drugs. So we want to have that documentation and we think it will benefit uh, businesses. So uh, these are many other things that uh, the council is also looking at and uh, which we'll be doing. But like I said, we will still be coming back to all the stakeholders to fine tune the nitty gritty of how we want to roll out these uh, issues. And uh, a lot of people, I also support that there should be no free seed. Like uh, Professor Sonia have said, government should buy the seed because we need to promote business. And that is why we're also pushing for the introduction of the plant variety protection law. So that when farmers know that the seed is getting is better than what he has as his own safe seed. And that seed is, he knows if we plant it, he will see five, four, three times more yield than he will get from his own seed. The farmer will be willing to buy the seed. When the difference is clear, just like the advert of 7up, the farmers will buy the seed. So I think what we should encourage is quality from the early generation seed stage to the certified seed stage. And you know, the certified seed getting to the farmers is top quality that we give, um, that will be true to whatever claims the company that is selling has said, and the farmers can see clear difference and they will be willing to buy. And apart from the level of certified uh, non-protected seeds, we are saying the PVP, we also introduce the certified protect, protected varieties and anybody that is buying it, we know, yes, I'm getting this from this uh, material and investors that have invested into it will be able to recoup their money to put back into, you know, future development of good varieties. These are many things that uh, we will be doing for the seed industry. So as we start to round up this session, I will call on Mr. Uh, NS Obi of the ECOWAS Commission. If you are there, uh, can you please uh, take this opportunity to say one or few things to the uh, audience? Mr. Obi. Um, okay, um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Follavin, um, and good, good afternoon or good uh, morning, uh, depending on where you are. I'm very happy to be part and parcel of this process on behalf of the ECOWAS Commission um, and want to commend uh, the Seed Council uh, for coming up with this uh, uh, webinar. I think seed is very fundamental to the agricultural transformation process taking place in West Africa and by extension, the African continent. And we are very, very happy to be part of this, that process. We've been working very closely with uh, the Seed Council. We've been working with COGAF, our technical arm, to ensure that we just do not provide seeds, but quality seeds uh, that are accessible, that are timely uh, for the use of the farmers. So we do appreciate uh, the ideas being proposed and want to assure all of you that these ideas would be incorporated into uh, seed-related um, interventions in the region and will continue to work with all of you. What is critical is sustainability and partnership, especially as we go through the COVID-19 and beyond. Thank you very much to you all here. Thank you, uh, Ernest, for the uh, word goodwill from the ECOWAS Commission and thank you to hear that yes, you are always ready to partner with us. Uh, let me also use this opportunity to thank um, Boaz of Agra and you know the strong word of Boaz. Uh, it's, uh, it gives us uh, confidence to do more, to hear that Agra is always ready to partner and support uh, the seed system in Nigeria. So we are, we are glad for all these uh, words that are coming. Somebody has asked if there is um, uh, a, a database of, of uh, seed companies in the country. I say, yes, you can see that on the NASC uh, website. Please uh, feel free to check out the uh, website of the council and uh, you will see all this uh, information uh, that you want. Uh, is there any support from FG via NAS for indigenous private startup breeding company? Uh, of course, uh, 
there would always be support, but join us to ensure that the push for the introduction of a plant, uh, plant variety protection law, which is actually a plant breeders' right law, is uh, uh, completed. And when we have that law, we can tell you that the enabling policy and regulatory environment to support startup breeding company uh, will be put in place and you will benefit from whatever you are doing as a startup uh, breeding company. Uh, we appreciate the need that uh, we need to collaborate with fertilizer blending companies so that we can develop specific fertilizer blend for crops. As uh, this person, Abdullah, is saying, no matter how good a seed is, if there is no appropriate fertilizer program, soil analysis to determine the soil nutrient, the seed will not give the desired yield. We appreciate this idea and we are going to explore the need to, uh, to partner. Uh, how possible is it to control the use of maize seed for small farm order who are used to engaging their previously harvested grain to replant each year? Uh, this is not good business for anybody farming that is doing this. What the council promotes and encourages is that every farmer should buy quality seed for every planting season to get quality yield and quality harvest. So uh, I think, uh, I can take one or two more. Somebody says, I realize most farmers don't plant certified seed. How do we educate them? The education starts from you and me. Uh, the farmer that you know beside you, please join us as part of the community seed uh, awareness uh, pool to educate them, if you know. Don't say you, you are, it's not your concern. And we are pushing that only the best quality genetics are sold to farmers. That is why we've introduced the seed codex, which is our quality assurance uh, authentication uh, um, tag, where every farmer can get back to us on any uh, package of seeds they buy on the shelf. So with this, you will be sure that you get quality for what you are buying. And when you plant it, you get the desired result. And if you don't get the desired result, you can get, you know, to uh, get back whatever you have uh, put into, into that. So I think um, on this note, I will want to say thank you to everybody that had participated. Again, to all our panelists, uh, um, Mr. Odubin Dei Bikunde, we say thank you very much for your contribution. To Professor Latif Oladimeji Sonny, thank you for your wonderful contribution. To Professor Abraham Ogubile, thank you. And to uh, Dr. Walter, we say thank you. And for NS that uh, gave us uh, the goodwill from the ECOWAS Commission, we say thank you. For my own part here, I say thank you to everyone. Keep participating in the Seed Connect and goodbye. Thank you.